In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up a Synology NAS using your Apple iPad and Synology's DS Finder app. One of the main advantages to using the DS Finder app is that the app will make the initial configuration of a Synology NAS a little less intimidating. However, because it simplifies the initial setup process, the app will make a number of assumptions regarding how your new NAS should be configured. So as we walk through the process of setting up a new NAS via DS Finder, we will try and point out issues or areas that we think might create problems at later stages of the setup. As you will see throughout this video, we will be using a mouse with our Apple iPad in order to configure our new Synology NAS. After installing, and then running the DS Finder app, we are first prompted to accept a Synology Privacy Notice. While we could select Skip, for this option we've decided to choose Accept. At the bottom of the screen we have two options, Set up new NAS and Manage existing NAS. For this demonstration we're going to choose Set up new NAS. Next we're asked if we want to create a Synology account. As there is no need to create a Synology account in order to set up a new Synology NAS, we decided to select Skip. We are now prompted to insert one or more drives into our new NAS. However, because we've already done this, we're going to select Skip. The DS Finder app is now ready to search our home network for our new NAS, so let's select Search. After a short delay, the details for any Synology devices connected to our home network will be listed. Let's select our new NAS from this list. We're now shown some basic information about our NAS, which includes its current IP address, serial number, and MAC address. Before the station manager is installed onto our NAS, we are informed that Synology Hybrid RAID will automatically be used to make storage volumes on our NAS. Synology Hybrid RAID, or SHR, is a simplified version of RAID that is something that we recommend you use as long as you do not have a specific need for a different type of redundant array of inexpensive disks. As the installation process will format any disks that we have installed onto our NAS, we're now warned that any existing data on those disks will be erased. As we've installed new disks into our new NAS, we will simply select OK. We are now prompted to check Synology's user agreements. It's worth noting that Synology are informing us that they plan to collect our IP address and download statistics. While it's not immediately clear exactly what is meant by download statistics, later during the installation process there is an option to disable the collection of statistics. Let's select Agree. We're now asked if we wish to enable notification. As this only notifies us when the installation process has been completed, we are going to select OK. However, when our iPad asks us if we would like DS Finder to send us a notification, we've decided to choose Don't Allow. We now need to wait for our NAS to format its hard drives and then download and install Disk Station Manager. The whole installation process will be dependent on the size and number of drives that you fitted to your NAS. As we fitted a single 2TB solid state drive to our NAS, the installation process took roughly 6 minutes to complete. Once our NAS is rebooted, the DS Finder app will ask us to create an administrator's account. With a new administrator's account created, we're now asked to agree to send statistical information anonymously to Synology. However, as it's not clear what information Synology are collecting, we decided to untick this option and select Submit. While our new NAS is ready for us to configure, we are notified that Synology recommend that we use Drive to manage files on our new NAS. Let's select Go. We're now showing the apps that DS Finder will pre-install onto our NAS. These apps are Drive, Moments and Audio Station. The reason these apps are pre-installed by DS Finder is that they work in conjunction with something called User Home Services. The idea behind User Home Services is it will allow users of our NAS to have their own private storage area. If we select General, 
you can see that we're provided with information that allows us to either view or change basic settings on our NAS. So for example, we can manage user accounts, set up features such as Quick Connect and push notifications, change how and when our NAS is updated, view system information that includes the ability to review network settings that our NAS is currently using, so that for example, we can see the DNS and IP addresses that our NAS has been assigned with. Finally, we have the ability to see if for security reasons, our NAS is blocking devices that use specific IP addresses. It's at this stage that it's worth noting that the DS Finder app has only completed an initial setup of our NAS. We now need to access its more advanced features, which can only be found when working in Disk Station Manager. So if from within the DS Finder app, we select the option DSM Mobile, as we are working from an iPad Pro, we are shown the desktop version of Disk Station Manager. However, on other models of Apple iPad, you might find that you're shown the mobile version of the DSM. As the mobile version of DSM does not include all of the functionality and settings that are included in the desktop version, you might find you need to manually enable desktop mode. So to summarize, by using the DS Finder app, we can quickly get a basic installation of Disk Station Manager running on our new Synology NAS. Then because the DS Finder app has been installed onto our iPad, we instantly have a simple to understand and easy way to access and make changes to our NAS. However, the problem with the DS Finder app is that having held our hand through the initial setup process, the app leaves us to work out what we need to do next, which for someone new to home networking or setting up a Synology NAS could lead them to make a configuration or security error.